Mom, Dad, I humbly suggest you save some money and shop Amazon for back to school. It's for my growth, meaning my body's growing at an alarming rate. And clothes you buy me this year will be very small very soon. Plus, the clothes I love today will be out of style tomorrow. But at least your wallet doesn't have to be my fashion victim if you shop low prices for school at Amazon. Hopefully this is helpful. Amazon. Spend less, smile more. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Dr. Psych Mom Show. Today I'm going to be talking about how what I've seen in my practice is the more successful a guy is, the more coachable he is. And I'll discuss what I mean by that, as well as how that can apply to you, even if you are not at the top 1% or anything close. So uh, before that, please do subscribe. Most recent subscriber episode was how to, uh, people who out-talk their spouses and how to think about this differently. It's not usually a good thing. It's not ever a good thing. Um, And uh, got some good ones coming up as well. And um, one of them is, let's see why women dream about their exes. All right, so um, anyhow, the more coachable you are, the more responsive to feedback you are, the more non-defensive you are. So a lot of men struggle with this and then wonder why their wives don't respect them. It is very, very hard to respect somebody who cannot accept feedback. And most guys would agree with that, like at work or just like in general, they would kind of agree with that. And, uh, but then somehow when it gets into their marriage, they are way more comfortable saying that their wife is extremely critical and that that's why things go wrong. So what I have noticed from working with guys who are generally, this is more of the CEO type, more of the entrepreneurial type. A lot of those guys have more ADHD, um, actually, and they're more sensation seeking. So they are chronically understimulated, which is why their life kind of went how it did. And you can listen to this more in my podcast on CEOs, but I do see it in people who are successful, even uh, within a corporate structure. Uh, partners at a law firm aren't, don't exactly have a boss, so they're kind of like at the top of the food chain, uh, even though they are certainly not entrepreneur in the classic sense of that, right? I see it in physicians. I see it in a lot of people that are like very successful is that they, um, they do not perceive criticism as criticism. They are chronically understimulated because they're really smart. A lot of them, maybe not, you know, especially the non-entrepreneurs don't have ADHD. The guys who have ADHD just love any stimulation at all. So criticism is pretty stimulating. And that's why like a lot of people hate it so much. It makes your face get red. It makes your heart beat faster. You feel that you're under attack. Um, For a guy with ADHD or a guy that thrives on... um, just stimulation, criticism is highly stimulating, quite honestly. So these guys love, they love to go to like uh, retreats, to go to seminars, to go to anything where like these 360 degree reviews from like they they go in for like a review where they're going to hear a bunch of shit that like everybody thinks about them, like the people on their level lower than them, way lower than them, everybody. They're like, they're like chomping at the bit. They can't wait. They cannot wait to hear what everybody thinks about them because that is so stimulating, right? Whereas the average person is terrified. They're terrified and they go on the defensive before it even happens. So they already go into it thinking about who could potentially be about to criticize them in the review and how they uh, don't deserve the criticism and how they're going to defend themselves. That is very, very different. It's a qualitative difference. It's almost dichotomous. There's the people who are like interested in and even stimulated by receiving feedback. And then there are the people who find it to be abhorrent, scary, and a reason to be very defensive. Think then about how these guys' relationships go, right? So the guy who's terrified about getting the evaluation at work, he is uh, terrified about getting evaluation at home too. So the wife could say to him, oh, I don't like that shirt on you, right? 
And then he thinks, God damn, she's such a bitch. This is why our relationship goes like this. And, you know, there are these other women in the world that wouldn't say that. And they have, uh, they know how to treat a man. And then I get this one on my Facebook group a lot. If I went to a different country, that's where they know how to treat men. Not like these American women. These, the, they would never say anything about my shirt, you know, and, and, and like this is about a shirt, right? So if your wife cannot say, I don't like that shirt shirt, you know, then how is she going to respect you, right? She's talking about a piece of fabric on your body and you cannot even roll with that. How in the hell is she going to be able to think that you're like a man who could is strong and who could like kind of roll with the punches of life, protect her if need be? And then some guys are like, well, I couldn't tell her I don't like her shirt. All right. Also, you don't share tampons, right? Because you're not a woman. So women are generally more sensitive to feedback than men, generally. Although the very high achieving women that I see who are also the CEOs, they're kind of similar with feedback. Like they love feedback, but they're still, the man CEO loves feedback even more. <laughs> and I think it's a testosterone thing. You know, testosterone just makes you less scared, you know, like in general. That's like, that's the God's honest truth. It makes you more aggressive for worse, but less scared is better. So there's ups and downs of everything, right? Including every gender, every hormone, wh what have you. So so then let's take something else. Because like there's a lot of guys who are like, oh, great, I don't care about the shirt. She could tell me I dress like shit and I'm good to go. I don't care. But then what about if she's like, oh, you know, I don't want to have sex right now. Well, a lot of guys take that, as you know, from my... Uh, podcast super personally. They take it as a personal attack, a criticism. They don't see it as like feedback, literally. I don't want to have sex. Well, shit, why doesn't she want to have sex? Is it about me? Is it about her? Is it both? Is there anything that I could do to fix it? And yes, there are guys that truly look at it like that. And if you are one of them that takes it super personally and it's a slap in the face and you get all heated about it, this is why she may not be able to be open and real with you, never mind give you sexual feedback. Because if she can't give you any feedback, she can't give you sexual feedback. And that's why I have a podcast that says uh, you can't get sexual feedback if you're a negative, critical, closed guy. And the other way you can't get feedback is if you're a guy that basically is completely undone by any sort of criticism. Because then she's terrified to criticize you because it destroys your life and your equanimity and the rest of the day, for sure. And so she can't give you any real sexual feedback, such as, I like when you do this and not this, or I don't like anything you do. We need to start from scratch, you know, which is more likely, you know, for, for many people who are in sexless marriages. So she can't tell you anything because you're too, too terrified of feedback. So like, for example, when I'm working with guys who are really into feedback, I'll be like, you know, I just noticed that you just took that uh, personally, what I just said, because it's not like they never take anything personally, right? So you could be thinking there's these guys that have like no fear, like don't give a shit. That's a sociopath. Like I'm not talking about sociopaths. So let's say I'll give you a, a good example. So let's say I'm working with a guy who's like a very coachable guy. And so I say to him, you know, we were just talking about your wife and, you know, you seem to take it personally when I said, you know, that at around her age, she's probably not going to want sex much anymore. You seem to take that personally. Like, why do you think that that is versus, you know, thinking, all right, that's a biological thing. And how do we work around it? So a guy that's coachable will say something like, I don't know. Did I? That's interesting. I didn't think I took it personally. Let me think about it. I mean, I guess, you know, I feel like I've been doing a lot of stuff for her. Like, and now this just seems like it's going to be one more thing. Be like, when else did you feel like that? Oh, I don't know. Maybe I used to feel like that a lot as a kid. I always had to bend over backwards for my parents or whatever. So we have like a discussion about it. Somebody, however, who's very sensitive, I'll say, seems like you just took that personally when I told you that the biological fact is that she's probably not going to want sex at this age. And that guy will be like, I didn't take that personally. I'll be like, well, all right. Well, okay, let, let's, I just noticed a response. I didn't have a response. That wasn't a response. I mean, I was trying to listen to you. What do you think? I'm, I'm not stupid. I, I know that. I know that it's going to be a biological change. What do you mean? I'm not stupid. So you see what I mean, right? So that, so the difference is, and of course, the latter guy definitely needs to be in therapy. So I'm glad he's in there. And over time, he can grow more coachable and more responsive and more open, right? But that's the difference. The difference isn't that like one guy is like this perfect, like no fear, like completely like 
overly like happy to be criticized, you know, although sometimes, you know, they really are quite interested. And that's when they perk up. Because as I said, a lot of times these guys are chronically understimulated and basically bored because the ADHD brain is bored all the time. So when I say, hey, I noticed something about you, they perk up. It's like no matter if it's good or bad, it's interesting, right? But even given not that, the coachable guy will respond. He'll be like, all right, sure, I'm here in therapy, right? Or in coaching. I'm here, and I'm literally here to get feedback. So I'm going to get the feedback. Even if I don't agree with her, even if the session ends, and I'm like, "Mm, I only agree with 5% of what she said, that's 5%. That is definitively more than I would have gotten of different way to look at things than if I didn't have the session. And that's really the way that the average person who is more sensitive to feedback can try to look at feedback, even if it's wrong, because there's a lot of guys that get obsessed with whether their wife's feedback is right or wrong. Even if it's wrong, most of it is wrong. A hundred percent of it won't be, quote, wrong. And also what is wrong anyway? It's her perception, right? So she doesn't like the shirt. Maybe a hundred other women would like the shirt. She doesn't like the shirt. You just learned something about a shirt that your wife likes. Or you might have learned that when your wife is mad at you, she says that you look, that your clothes are bad. Maybe you learned that. But there's something that you can learn from every interaction. And that truly is at the heart of the difference in, in these people. And this coachability makes people very successful because they're interested in the world. They are interested in feedback. They go to a personal trainer and they're going to get something out of that personal training session, no matter what. Even if the guy's 20 years younger than them and uh, barely any experience, there will be something that they get out of that. They will get feedback from anyone, anywhere. They're feedback junkies. They love it. They try to get it because it makes them grow and it's something that they couldn't have done on their own definitionally because it's the response of another human being to them and they can't do that. They could do a lot of things themselves, but what they can't do is be a different person responding to them. So they are looking for feedback in the world. Whereas Other people go through life hiding from feedback and then they show up as very defensive and very easily upset and overly sensitive. These are the guys who say, by the way, oh, women don't like emotional men. No, what women don't like is is men who become extremely defensive and emotional when they are called out. You know, men whose only emotion is anger and and, and, uh, defensiveness. That's what women don't like. Right. So there's a lot of guys, you know, especially on the Internet and the commenting section, you know, if if you're not aware, this is a dumpster fire, as I say all the time, because, um, you know, who's going to really respond some like attacking thing on like a therapist page? It's not a very happy individual. So these people, they're mad at the world and they're super defensive. So it, it, it's like if you go through life saying anybody who tries to give me feedback that I don't like is out to get me or is wrong, then you are like really, really um, closing off your options to learn more about yourself. And if you open up your options and you're looking for ways to learn more about yourself, then you can really truly grow as a person. And then you tend to move up in whatever work situation you're in because who does a boss want to work with, right? They want to work with someone who could accept feedback. Who do other people want to work with? Somebody who could accept feedback. If you are known as somebody who can't accept feedback, then you're basically just going to stay where you're at in your career. You're not going to move forward. In order to have your own business, you have to be able to accept feedback. You have to be able to roll with it, right? So, you know, for example, even my small business compared to the businesses of people that are my clients, this, this Dr. Psych Mom business If enough people tell me that they are not interested in something that I'm sharing, and it's very easy to see that on social media, right? So, you know, if if I write something about empathy, I do a little video on empathy and like nobody cares, there's no likes, I I, I can't just like double down and be like, oh, I'm just going to do like 15 more about empathy because who am I punishing? Me. No, nobody's going to look at my stuff, right? And then I can't market my business. If I get a lot that I write something about, you know, Uh, attachment, man, is that a big, right? And a lot of people like it, then I have to be like, oh, maybe I thought it was like a throwaway video, but I guess this is the direction people want me to go in, right? So I got to do it. It's certainly not like that's all that I can do. And it's like, not, you know, you know, we we don't want to go black and white, because then like people might be like, oh, so like, you, you don't even care about attachment, do you? 
Of course I care about attachment. That's why I made the damn video. But like you gotta say, out of all the things that I care about that I would be okay being my legacy for my brand, which are the things that people like and respond to, right? You know, it, it, it's, it's just common sense. But a lot of times people's ego and their very, very sensitive and defensive nature, which of course you learn growing up, that it, it gets in the way of them being successful in any regard because they cannot accept feedback. They take everything super personally, right? So in that regard, the equivalent would be like if I went on a tirade about why don't these people care about empathy? You know, this is why people, you know, or this is why the internet is terrible because I put out something on empathy and nobody gives a shit, right? Versus being like, oh, Guess that wasn't that interesting, you know, and then moving forward. So the way that you learn this behavior, as I just touched on, and is, as is the case always, is at home. So if you had a parent who could never accept feedback, who could never apologize, who could never say they were wrong, who could never say there was an alternate way to view anything, then definitionally, that is a closed minded person and a defensive person. And that's how you learn to be maybe not as bad as them, but in the same vein, you learn to struggle with the same things because you never had a role model that was coachable. This coachability is super huge with kids. People love it. Like, like when, when, uh, when they, their kid gets like a good coach or a good tutor, somebody who could really stretch them and give them feedback and whatever, pe parents are over the moon because they know instinctively this is such a good quality. But then they don't think, how could I model? Frequently, they, they do think it. But some people then do not go that step fo further and say, how can I model coachability in my home? What would it be like for my son to see my wife say, I don't like that shirt, and I laugh, and I'm like, oh, this shirt, you know, okay, cool. <laughs> like, I, I don't like it either. Here, I'll take it off right now. Put it, put it in the trash. You know, good. Tell me more stuff. Like, I want to be handsome for you, sweetheart. Versus say, oh, well, uh, well, I mean, well, I mean, I, I, th I, thought, I, th I, I, I thought you did, um, but, you know, that's fine, fine, okay. Like, what does your son learn from the latter, which is something, you know, that some people react like he's learning. If you get feedback, it's terrible. It's scary. It's really scaring dad in this moment. That's why he's acting so off kilter and off balance. Then he thinks either either he could go one of two ways. He could go either like dad's a pussy, which is not a very good male role model, or he could be like mom's a bitch. Why did she make dad feel bad like that? Versus like the first guy rips off his shirt and says, screw it, you know, good point. You know, I'm not a fashionista. Maybe we'll get me some more this weekend, you know, here, let's donate it, you know, or uh, like whatever, like, let's make a pin cushion out of it. Who gives a shit, right? Like that guy, like the kid is laughing. The kid's like, oh, I guess we just take feedback, you know, like that's being a man. I just take feedback. Now, of course, being a woman should be being able to take feedback too. However, <laughs> what I'm talking about seeing is that the top of the top men, they like really don't give a shit. And, you know, <laughs> they just really don't give a shit. And I, I don't see that as much as the top of the top women. I still see some more de defensiveness. It's true. I, it's, I'm, it's the same for me as well, I'm sure. You know, is that if I was a man, I would be like, fuck that empathy video. I'll now destroy everything on empathy, you know, and I'll do everything on attachment. It would be easier for me to do, possibly. Why do I think this? Women... I think do have a little more empathy, you know? I mean, I hate to say it, but, you know, it's the truth. I do think that women instinctively, from you know, it's just a hormonal mother's, I don't know what it is, but, like, I, I do not usually have to work on empathy as much with individual female clients as with individual male clients. I think it's a hormone thing. It's testosterone, whatever it is. I actually have a post. Does your testosterone prevent you from empathizing with your wife? And it's a good post. So you should check it out. So... Given that, I think there is uh, a lot more sensitivity to other people's reactions, a lot more rejection sensitivity, which, by the way, is a hallmark of depression, and depression is more common in women. And so I do think that, you know, if, uh, if you're a guy listening to this, there's a possibility that you could get, like, infinitely coachable, you know, like, and, and really never feel like you're going to cry at somebody's feedback, whereas that would be harder for the average woman especially hard for us, like in the second half of the cycle, you know, that's when you feel like you're going to cry a lot. And so if you're a guy listening to this and you get to a place where you can accept feedback, just like a motherfucker, like super good, your marriage will improve no matter what she does. Just like if she started to be more sexual with you, your marriage would improve no matter what you did. 
Sometimes one person's just got to start, you know? So if so, basically the TLDR is if you listen to this and you're like, yeah, okay, I could grow more uh, better with feedback, but only if she does first because she's the problem, then you just have to listen to this on and on and on and on until you understand that that's not the way to respond, <laughs> that that has nothing to do with your uh, actualization as a man or your relationship or your career getting better is what she does. What she does is what she does. Who cares? To, to a certain degree, who cares? You can't really change her. You could change you. And I say the same thing to women who come in. And they say, how can I make my husband be better at cleaning the house? I'm like, I don't fucking know. You know, I mean, <laughs> but it beats me. But what we can be better at is figuring out how do you care less? How do you communicate what you need more? Can you, in fact, get him into therapy, you know, if, if so that he can maybe have a different perspective on it? But can you make him do something? Not unless you have a gun to his head, which I don't recommend as a therapist. So, you know, I mean, that just is what it is. All right. I hope you guys found this interesting and uh, thank you for listening. Please do subscribe and I'll talk to y'all soon. Have a great day.